Grace to you and peace from God the Father and Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Everyone, and I mean everyone, is pursuing something that they consider the ultimate catch. That something could be a relationship, a new career, a promotion, or a unique image for oneself. I myself pursue that final mile, the one that gets you home safely. I'm approximate 80,000 miles from 3 million miles driven without a single accident or ticket. But whatever we pursue could either benefit our lives or it could ruin it. Now, I don't want to scare anybody, but right now, at this very minute, while you're in church or at home or traveling, this very moment you are being pursued, either good or bad, believer or unbeliever. You are being pursued. Before the creation of the world, our Heavenly Father created us. And He also created a unique plan for our salvation that we may return back home to Him. God knew that we would not be perfect. And He would always be watching over us and so, his pursuit of us started with three words. And you'll know what they are when you hear them. On the morning that God came into the garden looking for Adam and Eve, when they saw him, they ran and hid. God called out to Adam, where are you? This marks the beginning of God's pursuit for us. And it won't end until we all come back home to him. All throughout the Bible, we see the ongoing charge to pursue God. We read that God pursues us even more. Our Heavenly Father desires a relationship with us, his children. That's the purpose of our creation was for communion with our Heavenly Father. And one of the greatest examples of pursuing us is found in the book of Luke, the parable that we just read. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one. Does he not leave the ninety-nine by themselves and goes out and finds one? And when he does, he tells his friends to gather and rejoice, for he found his lost sheep. You see, I believe that one lost sheep is a believer, however, not a real true follower. The one who says, oh, I believe in God. I just don't have time for church, study, fellowship. He loves me just the way I am. I also believe that that one lost sheep is the unbeliever, the one who says, there is no God. There is no heaven. I want to live my life enjoying what the world offers. But God doesn't give up on the unbeliever either. In the book of John 10, 16, Jesus boldly says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will hear my voice. And they will become one flock with one shepherd. Either believer or unbeliever, we are God's children. And he will pursue us until we are all home with him. The parable of the lost sheep is more than just a shepherd looking for his sheep. It's about a devoted father looking for his lost child. That lost sheep is each one of us before we enter a relationship with our Savior, Jesus Christ. Even though we were created to live a life filled with purpose and true fulfillment of all that God has blessed us with, 
Unfortunately, this became impossible when sin entered the world. We all have sinned. We all fall short of God's glory. But the parable shows just how far God will go to save his children, to save us. No matter how many people there are in the world today, and as of January 2023, you ready for this? There is 8.1 billion, billion people in the world. And yes, God will leave the 8,099,999,999 for one. For you. For me. Thank you, Google. <laughs> Just as one is special to God, so are the 8.1 billion special to him as well. The shepherd does not give up looking for his sheep at sundown. He will wander the countryside until he finds his last sheep and brings them home. God pursues us even when we give up on ourselves. But God won't and never will give up on us. That's just not his way. No matter how many times or how far we strayed, or when we were too busy just to spend a few minutes in prayer to him. He will never remind you of your guilt or of your sins. But when you return, he welcomes you back into his presence. Motivated by a love that's beyond our understanding, God pursues humanity regardless of what state in life we are found to be either married, single, dating, living for God, or running from Him. God seeks to win the affection of our hearts by faithfully pursuing us. And we can see a more clear depiction of this pursuit than we do in the book of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. That love that John refers to in scripture is called agape love, which is sacrificial and considered the highest form of love that exists even today. This love was very costly for God. But he pursued us through the radical act of sacrificing his own son. That shows God's love for us is unmatched and far greater than we will ever know or that we will ever feel. Even more astounding is that God demonstrated his lavish and sacrificial love. When we were all sinners, he pursued us, even when we weren't even thinking of him, let alone knowing him. God knows that there will be great joy in heaven for one sinner that comes to repentance than the 99 that need no repentance. God has been looking forward to a connection with us simply because he loves us. Thus he sent his son to seek and to save the lost. He came, lived, died for the sake of God pursuing us. We are valued so much by God that he created us in his very own image and we may know him and have true life in him. The Bible commands us to pursue God and promises that when we do, we will find him. And it also tells us that God himself 
is the initiator of those spiritual pursuits. And besides the parable of the lost sheep, which, by the way, is one of my favorites since for many years I was that lost sheep. Jesus told of other parables that illustrated God's pursuit of mankind. In fact, the Holy Bible is the story of God pursuing those of us who come to know God and are privileged to be used by him here on earth as witnesses for him and of Jesus who charged the disciples to continue with his work as witnesses of the reconciliation that he desires. You will be my witnesses to the ends of the earth since that time Believers in Jesus have been spreading the good news of, of the gospel. That God is pursuing a relationship with each one of us. Jesus made that way possible. Once we are believers and we repent, ask for forgiveness of sins and are baptized with water, does not end God's pursuit of us. That was just the beginning. God continues to pursue us through the Holy Spirit who indwells us. The Spirit leads us in the way of the Lord and brings freedom, love, help, correction, and the power we need to walk with God and in obedience of his holy word. The Spirit is God pursuing us and enabling us to pursue him back so that we have a close relationship with him. His spirit is here to pray for us and with us, to help us in our weakness. After all, we are human and we easily fall to sin. His spirit eliminates his word, the Holy Bible, to us so that we may know him better. He unites us as believers with one another in worship, prayer, study, and song, equipping us to lift and build up one another, all under his holy name. God guides us in life, and reminds us that we have been adopted by God as his children and can rest steadfastly in hope in him, trusting that he will keep and fulfill all his promises to us. The parable of the lost sheep, the shepherd leaves 99 to find the one missing, one who is alone, vulnerable, and in danger of being attacked by wild animals, the world. Jesus said, for the Son of Man has come to save, which is lost. Jesus Christ is our Lord, our Savior, our Good Shepherd, who laid down his life that we may be forgiven and rescued from eternal death. It is well worth it to Jesus to seek and save his lost sheep, knowing that the alternative for the lost is an eternity of separation from God. Jesus not only brings us as sheep into the fold, he leads, he also guides, and he protects us as we follow him. God sought us out first. The very act of creation is one pursuit. He promised to continue to make himself known to us, and that promise is clear, crystal clear, that God desires a relationship with us. Because of God's graciousness and the gift of free will, God will never force himself upon us. He loves to pursue us, he loves it when we seek him. We love it that he's always there for us 
And when we are caught, and we will be, it will bring honor and glory and praise to him. God pursues us every day in many different ways so that we don't have to live this Christian life on our own because we lived it in close relationship with God. And because of the work of Jesus Christ and his teachings and his death for our sins, the resurrection and the gift and power of the Holy Spirit, we have the promise of eternal life with our Heavenly Father. It is then that the pursuit can come to an end. For he finally caught us all. And we are his forever and ever. We serve a God who loves us more than we can fully understand. What an amazing gift. What an amazing shepherd. What an amazing God. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus our Lord, and the life everlasting. Depart in peace.